Hello everyone, and thanks for tuning into our latest opinion poll tracker video here at Gavin Partridge YouTube channel. So once again, we bring you more polling uh, data. This time, you'll be looking at the latest prediction from electoral calculus, and then the opinion poll conducted during July 2023 that those opinion polls were based on for the next UK general election. And the general election can happen no later than January 2025, but realistically, it's most likely to be sometime from spring to autumn. Uh, next year. So we're probably only a year or so away from uh, the next UK general election. So getting ever closer. And uh, we'll have a look at latest prediction in a moment. Just say that you can enjoy the content on the channel at the moment. Please do you like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much everybody for doing that. Right, let's go to the latest prediction from electoral calculus then. So in three, two, one, here we go. And uh, they're predicting that uh, Labour will have a landslide majority again uh, this month. They're going for a majority for Labour of 278 seats, which is down 22 on the 300 uh, seat prediction that they was predicting on um, last month. So a little bit of a tiny swing from Labour to Conservative there, but nevertheless still a massive, massive uh, majority forecast and predicted by electoral calculus for Labour. Right, let's have a look at the opinion polls that that is based upon uh, then. So, or we'll have a look at the prediction first, we'll have a look at the polls. So let's deal with the uh, prediction first of all. So got our party contrast here, Conservative, Labour, Liberal Democrat, Reform, Green, SNP, Plyde, and then down into the Nor Northern Irish parties just here. 29, 2019 votes and seats just here. And then predictive vote share and uh, seat predictions just here. So the Conservatives are being forecast to have a central prediction of 111 seats at the next UK general election from electoral calculus. Uh, that's the central prediction. That would be absolutely shockingly terrible for the Conservatives. It would be virtually wipe out. That is well below what they got in 1997, which uh, was their worst result since about the 1830s and, and, and the Duke of Wellington. Um, though it would be catastrophic that for the Conservatives, there is a margin of error though, so at the low end they could go down to just 42 seats, which again, <laughs> I mean that is oblivion. And at the high end they could be on two four seats, which I think at, at the moment, if they came away with 246 246 seats at the next election. They 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 take that. They, I think they take that, given the uh, the polling at the moment. That's on a 26.8% uh, share of a vote. So basically 27% share of a vote being predicted for the Conservatives. Labour predicted to get 45.6% share of votes. That's rounded up 46% then. Um, so that gives them a central seat prediction of 464 seats. Again, within the margin of error, they could be as low as 329. And, and at the high end, they could be as high as 541. Um, note that 329 would still get them an overall majority, whatever is happening with any other party there. Liberal Democrats predicted to be on 10.9% votes, so 11%, very similar to the 11% that they got um, in 2019 election. Central prediction gives them 24 seats. So although, it's quite interesting, although the Liberal Democrats are forecast get the same or roughly, actually a little bit less than the vote they got in 2019. They're actually up on seats, and that's down, of course, to tactical uh, voting in uh, in uh, Conservative, Liberal Democrat target seats. Um, at the high end, they could be as high as 42 seats. At the low end, they could be on just 11, which, of course, is what they got in uh, 2019. Reform is predicted to get the 6% of the vote, but the central prediction has them on no seats at all. That, of course, is, the, uh, is down to first past the post, not favouring smaller parties. 6% is quite a lot, and on a proportional system, you know, they would get quite a few seats with that, I would have thought. At the high end, they might get a seat. At the low end, they get no seats. Greens, again, on uh, nearly 5% of the vote, 4.8, they only get one seat again. That's down to uh, that's down to first past post. SNP on 3.8%, with a central prediction of 27 seats. At the high end, they could be on 45. At the low end, 
they could be down to just 10. And Plied with a central prediction of four seats. High end, they could get five at the low end. They could go down to two. And then, of course, got the Northern Irish parties down here. So the central prediction is for Labour to have a massive landslide historic majority of 278 seats with the Conservatives on just 111 and Labour on 464. That is way above the landslide that they achieved in 1997, uh, by the way, when I think they got about 170-something seats. Right, let's have a look at the, uh, the polls that that prediction is based upon then. So this is all of them from uh, the opinion poll page at uh, Wikipedia. So uh, these are all of the polls that were conducted during July 2019. So you see it's a, it's a sea of red in the, uh, lead, in the lead column. Just here, Labour leading every single poll um, during July 2023. Um, and the biggest prediction, actually, the biggest lead that Labour had through uh, last month was this poll just here on 26%. But that was from Omnisys. Um, which had Labour above 50% actually in that poll on 51% Conservatives on just 25% Liberal Democrats on three. Um, and on uh, eight, I should say, I want to talk about three. Uh, Liberal Democrats on eight. Uh, a 26% lead there um, for Labour. Absolutely enormous lead. That is at the high end. Most of the uh, polls have Labour sort of upper teens to low 20s. So, um, this is a little bit more reflected, maybe YouGov just here from the 19th to the 20th of July. They had Conservatives on 25, Labour on 44, Liberal Democrats on 10, giving the uh, Labour Party a lead of 19% of the vote. Um, a couple more. So we've got Ipsos Mori just here, our oldest pollster. And uh, later on in the month, I'll be uh, looking at the um, leader ratings between uh, Keir Starmer and uh, Rishi Sunak, actually, with Ipsos. So it's going to be a new video uh, starting up on the channel um, a little bit later on in the month. So watch out for that. Ipsos, the oldest uh, UK pollster, formerly uh, Mori, of course, Mori, uh, Ipsos Mori and Mori. Um, now they're Ipsos, uh, but they're the same company, and uh, they've been doing polling since the 1970s in uh, in this country. They have got leader ratings, you know, historically ratings going back a long time. Anyway, I'm not going to change it with that, but just a little plug for a video coming up on the channel later on in the month. But uh, they found Labour with a 17% lead. Uh, Labour on 45, Conservatives on 28, and uh, Liberal Democrats on 12%. Uh, another big uh, Labour lead was this one, 23%, 49 for uh, Labour, 26 for Conservatives, Liberal Democrats on 9. Um, generally, Labour in most of these polls sort of mid to upper 40s, Conservatives mid to upper 20s. That one, more in common, not sure who they are, they gave uh, Labour a 15% lead, which I think is about the smallest le uh, lead for Labour throughout most of the month. We also have another 15% Labour lead uh, just there. And they have the Conservatives on 29% uh, to Labour's 44%. So that was a little bit better than the Conservatives. We've got Salvation down here. Again, it gave Labour a 15% lead. Um, no, Labour on 45, Conservatives on 30. So um, there have been a few, one or two handful of polls we've got the Conservatives into the uh, in, uh, to the third percent mark, got Savanta just here again, Conservatives 30, Labour 45, 15 percent Labour lead um, with that one. But generally, most of the polls have uh, the Conservatives in the 20 percent of Labour, either in the mid or upper uh, 40 percent. More recent polls, you know, the final one of the month was Delta poll just here. Again, we spoke about that 23 percent. Uh, Labour lead 48 to 25. We've got Redfield, Wilton, they do weekly polling uh, and they had Labour on 15% with 43 to Conservative 28. That's a little bit lower actually for Labour with that one down into the low 40s. But there's not much sign here of a recovery in the Conservative uh, position. To be honest, it still looks pretty grim uh, for Conservative supporters. This is the overall um, opinion poll uh, graph, how it's looking at Wikipedia 
at the moment. And you can see it's looking very, very solid uh, for Labour, this. So, of course, we have the, the, the widest margin between Conservatives and Labour when the Conservatives went off a cliff was um, last autumn, autumn of 2022, during uh, the very, very, very short uh, uh, trust uh, ministry administration um where we have the mini budget and economic troubles so uh labor opened up a absolutely enormous lead then like 30 in some parts i think 40 percent leads um that obviously narrowed when uh, rishi sunak came in but not perhaps by as much as the conservatives would have been hoping for to be honest and the conservatives have been generally stuck somewhere around here in the mid to upper uh, 20s. And whilst the Labour League did come down a little bit, they've generally been trending kind of in the mid to upper 40s, to be honest. We did a few couple of months ago, around sort of April time, maybe we did get a little bit of a, 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 of a sign of swing back to the, to the government, to the Conservatives. Um, so there was a little bit of a mini recovery starting to take place around April time. But then, um, you know, that was very quickly snuffed out for the time being anyway. And uh, Labour went back up a little bit. Conservatives dropped a little bit. And, and you see things looking very, very steady. As far as the other parties are, con are concerned, reform has ticked up slightly. Liberal Democrats kind of treading water. And uh, there's not much sign of anything happening for the Greens or the SNP down here either. I think the SNP has actually dropped quite significantly. Um... Uh, after the uh, arrests and uh, the troubles of uh, Miss Sturgeon. Um, and as far as... Oh, is it Mrs Sturgeon? I'm not quite sure. And as far as government approval is concerned, still extremely unpopular. Um, that doesn't get any better for the Conservative and for the governing party either, for the government. So uh, we see uh, on the latest tracker from YouGov, we can see that 66% are disapproving of the government, 14% approve of this government, and 20% don't know. So the, um, the amount of people, the number of people approving of the government, uh, disapproving, I should say, of the, no, approving of the government, the, the amount of people approving of the government is still underneath the don't knows, which is always, you know, <laughs> a bad sign, as I've explained, when you have more people who don't know compared to the people that approve, um, that's uh, that's a pretty bad sign uh, for the uh, government's fate. So, all looking very static, not much happening. It appears for the time being that people have made up their mind that they want to change the government and, uh, and you know, have a Labour government. We shall see whether that holds out through to the general election or not, but for the time being... Um, it looks quite stable. So we'll just come back to the prediction from electoral captains. Here it is, Ben, in the final analysis. They are forecasting and predicting that Labour will have an overall majority at the next UK general election of 278 seats. That would be the biggest majority for a governing party, I think, on record, um, and uh, would be a catastrophic result for the Conservatives. Um, right, OK, so we'll do it all over again uh, next month and see if there's any change in the uh, position. Then, as I say, we're going to have another video coming up later this month. We're going to look at the personal uh, ratings between uh, Rishi and also uh, Sakir. And uh, that will be coming up in a separate video later on uh, this month using the, um, the data from Ipsos, formerly Murray and Ipsos Murray. If you have enjoyed this Opinion Poll Tracker video for August 2023, please can you like, share, subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for doing that, and we'll have more for you very, very soon. For this one, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.